This lecture looks at multi-loop circuits. Many multi-loop circuits cannot be simplified using equivalent resistances. However, there is a general solution that follows a standard procedure. For example, take a look at this two-loop circuit down to our lower left. The resistors in this circuit cannot be simplified into serial or parallel uh, components. The first step is to choose a direction to go around the loops for Kirchhoff's second law. The choice is arbitrary, so often I just use uh, clockwise for both of them. So the direction is indicated by these green arrows making a loop. The second step is to choose directions for the currents in the resistors. Again, the choice is arbitrary, and if you get them wrong, you'll just end up with a negative current. And so it means you wind up, you're pointing and you put the arrows in the wrong direction. So you can draw the arrows in any direction you like. You just have to make sure you're consistent when you go ahead and create the equations out of these choices. The third step is to use Kirchhoff's second law on the first loop. We have a voltage source. We have a current going through R1, and you're going in the direction of the current flow. So the green arrow points in the same direction as the, as the red arrow. So it's a minus I, I1 R1. We also have a current gain across R3 because the current, your green arrow is going in the opposite direction of the current flow. So it's plus I3 R3, and that whole thing is equal to zero. So that's loop one. Loop two, the one on the right, has a minus voltage because you're going from the positive to the negative side of the voltage. So we write it as a minus V as our voltage source. Then we go across, then we will be going across R3, which is in the same direction as the, the orange and green arrows are in the same direction, so it's a minus I3 R3. And the same is true for the R2, and they're in the same direction, so it's a minus I2 R2, and that's equal to zero. If we add these two equations, the V's cancel, and we have minus I1 R1 minus I2 times R2 is equal to zero. We can solve that for I2. And that's equal to minus I1 divided, times R1 divided by R2. The fourth step is to use Kirchhoff's first law on that node up there where the three currents come together. We have two currents that flow into the node, I1 and I3, so I1 plus I3 is equal to the outflow, which is I2. Solving for I3, we have I3 is equal to I2 minus I1. We plug in for I2 what we just found over here on the left. And then we solve for I3 in terms of I1. So now we have I2 and I3 in terms of I1. Now what, if we know what, if we find out what I1 is, we'll, we'll know what I2 and I3 are. So we we'll go back over to the first loop, bring it down. So we have V minus I1 R1 plus I3, which we brought over from the other side, times R3 is equal to zero. We solve that for I1, and we get that value. So now we know I1. We substitute back to get I2 and I3 by putting them into these other two blue boxes, and we're finished.